my name is Michael Dietz. I am father of three boys living in Bamberg and I'm a product and solution security officer for Siemens Mobility Customer Service. My name is Svanche Weiss. I'm the product line manager for cyber security services. Before, I was in signaling for a very long, long time. Now I was responsible for the Southeast Asia region. I started thinking about cybersecurity, I think, when I first started to play around with computers. What I like about cybersecurity is, is that it's not only about technology, but also how people react to certain incidents. Not only technology, it's always about people. We are building up cybersecurity services for our rail customers. We do vulnerability monitoring, we do security assessments, and we do intrusion detection service. We work on processes, we work on tools, we work on training for the whole mobility customer services personnel. So that means we find issues and we solve them. And their passengers can feel safe and secure as well. I really prefer traveling with a train a lot. Because you can do so many things. I definitely prefer the train. A safe means of transportation is environmentally friendly and it's quite comfortable. I can do anything I want on a train. How do you make sure a train is ready to go? Not just today, but also in five years, 10 years, 30 years time. As a lay person, when it comes to servicing a train, I'd say, make sure the screws are all tight and all the cables are in the right position. And yeah, is the windscreen wiper still there? But all of these bits are visible. What about the invisible ones? Cybersecurity, it's the same thing. Trains needed today, in five years and 30 years, and service is the crucial bit. How does it work? How do we keep trains cyber secure over time? And I'll talk about this with two experts, Svantje and Michael. Great to have you. Svantje, you're a product line manager for cybersecurity services at Mobility at Siemens. And Michael Dietz, you're a product and solution security officer at Siemens Mobility Customer Service. On my way here, by the way, I took two trains. One, Brand new high speed uh, train built by Siemens, top, completely modern, top notch. The other train, regional, 30 years old. So I'm wondering the first one, probably super cyber secure, all the things we heard today. But the second one, is it more like cyber incident, just break the glass and pull the cables, <laughs> Svante? Uh, no, certainly not. We at Siemens Mobility Customer Services, we aim for 100% system availability, and this includes cybersecurity as well. So the previous speakers we saw, Andres and Krishna, Andres, he provides secure rail infrastructure, and Krishna provides secure trains to our customers. But from the first day, security gets worse. There might be new software vulnerabilities and there might be new threats. For that reason, it is very important to keep up cybersecurity over the complete life cycle. And yeah, we can do it because we have the expertise in cybersecurity as well as in the rail domain. It sounds a bit like a new train is like a newborn baby. The moment I step into this world, I'm exposed to threats and germs and they change over time. <laughs> Now, when you visit customers, how do they put this to practice? What do you observe, Svantje? Yeah, well, it was around five years ago, I was invited by a European metro operator. He invited me to his uh, maintenance workshop and it was impressive. It was a huge hall. There were individual workplaces. There were huge tools. There were spare parts. It was smelling of metal and grease. But there was not a single PC. And I thought, what about the software? Software has to be maintained as well. Especially, it has to be kept cyber secure. And today, when, what, what happens when it goes wrong? How do we notice that? Yeah, well, 
the other day I took a train and on the seat reservation display I saw a MAC address displayed and I thought, hmm, this is a perfect invitation for hackers, for hackers because they see that standard software is used and if an attack happens, it can cause disruptions, it can cause chaos on trains or on stations even and it causes tremendous costs. So trains are creating a lot of opportunity. There's a Wi-Fi network, you're there, and then you even see, oh, wow, it's a Windows system. Let's go, let's have a mm -hmm. run. So, Michael, when it comes to cybersecurity, what are the worst mistakes for operators of, of railway <coughs> systems? Um, probably a lot. <laughs> um, there are a lot of possibilities to do things wrong. Um, maybe one remarkable thing, um, thinking back a little bit, uh, a colleague of mine, Himself, he was a cybersecurity expert. He found a USB stick somewhere placed around in the office area and plugged it into his PC. This is normally something you shouldn't do because this is a traditional way how hackers might enter a company. It's like absolute no-go, especially cyber yes. people, but it, it is somehow is in our DNA, right? <laughs> yeah. This is made to be plugged in, let's do it. <laughs> exactly, exactly like this. Yeah. And uh, as you said, he's a well-trained person. He's a security expert. He still did it. On the other hand, he also reacted in the exactly right way. He notified us, we started our incident management process, looked at his PC, and we didn't find anything. Um, but the key message is, you need to have trained people that maybe don't make these mistakes, but you also need to have the awareness within the people to make sure what should be done if there is an incident. So it's hard to say, did the system fail or work? Because yes, he failed, he did the wrong thing, but then success, because he immediately realized and he, he openly admitted he, he started the mitigation mm -hmm. and, and it was okay. Exactly. This is uh, of great importance. This is a cultural thing. So we have to make sure that the people really know what they are doing, especially in industries that are a little bit more metal-based. So what do you recommend uh, your, your customers? How, how do they get, get it right? Uh, they need to make sure that we probably, or they need to make sure that they probably address training, uh, cybersecurity training, cybersecurity awareness as part of the on-the-job trainings. This is why we also provide these services as part of our portfolio. Yes, exactly. And um, what we offer is a holistic service concept. And this service concept is made up of four elements. So the first element is the assess element. So the customer needs to know what is the status of his security, what is the security status of his trains, what is the security status of his rail infrastructure. It starts like with knowing what's in there. What yeah, can, what is in there, what, what, what risks are there, what vulnerabilities are there. Then the second pillar is the implement pillar because of course you need to do, for example, some kind of software patching or other mitigation measures. And the third pillar is the continuous monitoring. Um, here you can do vulnerability monitoring or even intrusion detection service. And the fourth pillar is, as uh, Michael mentioned, is the training. And this is a very essential part. And it is called holistic because it covers technology, it covers processes and co it covers people as well. So with these four elements, Svanti, I, I, I get it why you say it has to be holistic. You may have world-class training, but if you have like completely inadequate tools, it's, it's not going to work out. One of these, the monitoring bit, I'd like to learn more, Michael. How does it work in practice? Do you have an example how this monitoring works? Yes, of course. So um, today, if you write software, you usually do not write everything on your own. It's even security worst practice to uh, write for example, cryptographic software on your own. So what you do, um, you usually use open source components, for example, or other third party components and assemble your rail system. Um, of course, if new vulnerabilities get discovered as part of your rail system, you need to probably assess the risk that this vulnerability introduces into your rail system. You need to have the expertise on hand that can really assess the importance. But the, the, it's great. Sharing is caring, they mm -hmm. say. And here, if we share code, it's it's good because if there's a vulnerability, the community will let me know. If I write my own code, mm -hmm. nobody is like, in, in all likelihood, is going to tell me about the problem. 
Exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, as part of our service, what we do, we recommend the right action to our customers in order to keep their system safe and secure and uh, also to keep it highly available, of course. Another aspect of our services is our security scanning service. So what you can do is that you scan your rail system, could be rolling stock or rail infrastructure, um, and try to identify previously unknown vulnerabilities. And also enhance this with proper recommendations how to react on this. Yeah. And um There's an additional element, so with security scanning and uh, software vulnerability monitoring, you find software vulnerabilities, but it is also possible to implement an intrusion detection system. And an intrusion detection system is kind of an alarm system, but imagine you sit on your car and the alarm keeps beeping and you don't know what to do with it. And this is why you re need your rail experts, you need your rail infrastructure experts, rolling stocks expert, um, as a kind of second line of defense that support you, the customer, with these sorts of alarms. Okay, so you, you, we have a problem in operation, but at some point I have to go back to the source, if you will, and talk to the people who build the train. And then having that in-house, in, in, in if you will, is a, is a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. But if I think about what you say, look, you're telling me, okay, you need to invest in great trains and then servers and then training and monitoring and you can sell all of that to me. That's a bit expensive at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, but keep in mind, a cyber security attack can cost a lot of money. For that reason, cyber security measures over the life cycle should become the default. And then our customers, the operators and their customers, the passengers can feel, continue to feel safe and secure. Okay. And then with cybersecurity, the best type of it is the one you never notice because there simply is no incident. What I learned today is that it shouldn't matter how old the train is I ride on. You can service legacy infrastructure, old trains, just as well in terms of cybersecurity as new ones. But what's most important is that we keep investing. And thank you so much for, for spending this time with us, uh, Svantje and Michael, and have a great way home. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.